I'm going to show you different ways of taking the pressure off when you are painting in watercolour so you can enjoy it, let go and feel a little bit free. Let's get started. One of the first ways of sort of taking the pressure off and loosening up is not to have an outline drawing. And what I'm doing here is I'm spritzing with my brush just clean water on to a cold press 300 grams watercolour paper. I'm mixing up Daniel Smith's Christmas green, Christmas tree green, but you can use cascade green, hooker's green, or you can mix a blue and yellow. I'm using Alvaro Castanet's Neef brush. So it's a reservoir brush with a sort of a rigger in the middle. So you can hold lots of water, but you've got this lovely sort of long tip. Now you don't have to use this brush. There are other reservoir brushes, but you could actually use a rigger or just a small thin brush. And I'm just applying this paint, the green, with a little bit of Payne's Gray. You can use black as an alternative or even indigo. I'm just sort of painting straight lines. And these are going to be sort of conifer trees or fir trees. And I'm just wriggling my brush here and there using that sort of mix there, the green and the Payne's Gray. And just painting very loosely these fir trees and going back and forth, keeping the marks smaller as I go towards the top of the tree. What I find useful is just having these straight lines and that's the tree trunk and just then painting on the foliage and making it fun for myself, mixing up a little bit more green here and just sort of going back and forth. It's as simple as that. And to make it darker, add more paint. To make it lighter, add more water. And if you can see there, the water that I sort of spattered on at the beginning, the paint sort of catches that and it sort of just sort of blends a little bit and creates some lovely sort of effects there, soft effects. Now, another way of taking the pressure off is not to have a photograph to copy. What tends to happen sometimes when you use photographs, which I totally use all the time, by the way, but what I find is that you end up really wanting to get it to look just like the photograph. I use photographs as a reference to get my imagination going. I tend to sort of start with the photograph and then go my own way. But if you find you're sort of tensing up because you want to get it to look like the photograph, maybe try working from your imagination or start off using the photograph as a reference and then just put it away and then just carry on and see where the painting takes you. Now I'm using a very limited palette here and it's another great way of taking the pressure off. You don't have to think too much. You know, as I said, if you wanna make something lighter, add more water, dark, add more paint. If you're going to use just a couple of colours, always have one colour that can create darker tonal values, i.e. black, Payne's grey, indigo, sepia, ultramarine, Prussian blue. They're all dark colours. And then you can just pick that second colour, whatever sort of favourite colour you have that week. I'm always changing my mind about colours. So I'm just adding creamier and darker paint here. So I started off pretty much wet in wet. Now I've sort of got creamy paint and I'm painting damp into damp and just using the tip of the brush to create some really nice effects. And if you notice, I'm spattering and I really do find spattering loosens you up. I find sometimes you can really tighten up with watercolor and spattering just takes that pressure off. So I'm turn my painting upside down here using that Neef brush, the reservoir brush, and sort of painting the top of the trees here, very thin lines, and then some of the foliage there, sort of smaller marks, using the mix of the green and the Payne's grey. And just creating lots of sort of marks, working damp into damp, really kind of just going for it here, creating lots of marks and experimenting. So my number five tip is to tell yourself this isn't going to be the painting. This is your practice and you're just experimenting and working out ideas. That really does take the pressure off. 
Now you might be asking yourself, why am I painting upside down? I just find it easier to sort of paint these sort of small fiddly marks and thin long lines upside down. You may also find this helpful sideways as well. And I do this a lot when I'm painting trees. So I'm just scrubbing here with the brush and just creating some texture here and then sort of painting more tree trunks damp into damp. I've turned my painting the right way round and I'm painting a darker mix now of Payne's Grey with a little bit of the green, damp into damp to pull these trees in the center away from the trees behind to create depth. My number six tip is to use a spritzer bottle. It's great because you can soften edges, you can even spritz away paint that you don't like, and it's great to create atmospheric semi-abstract effects, and it can also blend colors as well. The other tip that I have, tip number seven, is to wet the paper and lift off anything you don't like. It gives you a sense of security knowing that you can actually kind of erase mistakes in your watercolour painting. And I'm just spritzing the top of these trees here just to soften some of the tops, to push them away and again to create more atmospheric effects in the landscape there. Makes it look more 3D and misty. So this is very thick paint, so little water, lots of paint. Mostly Payne's Grey with a bit of that Christmas tree green. I'm painting damp into damp with the Neef brush. Again, you can use a rigger or a small brush to create these thin lines. And I'm just going back and forth painting quite quickly. And I find this is a really good way of getting long, thin lines. If you go slow, you tend to sort of, your brush starts to wriggle and shake. So going faster really is helpful. And I'm just sort of splodging on some more foliage here in the foreground, sort of crisscrossing um, this damp paint to create some texture there on the right. And again, doing this in the, here on the left-hand side. Remember, you want those branches and foliage bigger at the bottom of the trees. And you can vary your colours, adding a little bit more of the green, a little bit more of the grey, so you get a little bit more interesting colours rather than just one flat colour. So as you can see how the spritzing has created some lovely mistiness behind the trees on the left there through the centre. I love that effect there. So just a few more marks here and there. And of course, I've decided to turn my painting upside down just to add a few more marks um, and details on the top of the trees here. Pretty much wet on dry now. The paint has dried off quite a bit in this area. I'm still using that Payne's Grey and Christmas Tree Green. So I've decided to add some rocks in the foreground. You don't need to do this. I'm just experimenting. So I've mixed up some burnt sienna with my Payne's Grey and it's quite creamy and I'm using my size eight round brush to apply the paint, sort of damp into damp. It could almost be wet on dry in some places and just adding a little bit of dark underneath the trees there, both left and right. I'm using a plastic card just to swipe the paint to sort of lift off. You want to do this when the paint is damp and not too wet. So I would suggest practicing, but it's quite effective. As you can see, I've got some rocks now in the foreground. I'm just lifting off a little few grasses and sort of details as well there. And you get some lovely long thin lines there in the foreground. And I've decided to add a little bit more burnt sienna just to warm up some of those rocks here and there to pull them forward and just softening with a wet brush there. I've also added some yellow ochre left and right there just to really warm up that foreground. The paint's quite creamy, so it's not going to run too much. So it's damp into damp. Just painting that here and there. And I've decided to spritz it just to soften some of those edges and push things back. And I felt that the foreground was blocking the eye from going through the painting there. So I'm softening that. I don't even have to touch the paper. All the paint just runs off. And that really does take the pressure off with the spritzer bottle. And I've decided to sprinkle some table salt onto the damp paint. What that will do, it will absorb the paint and create some lovely light textures. I'm going to allow the painting to dry naturally so it gives the salt time to work. And it really has worked well there in the center and sort of around the sort of left-hand side there, creating some lovely light textures. 
So I've decided to turn my painting sideways and just sort of finesse now, painting wet on dry and pulling out a few of those trees using my size four round brush. Now you can carry on with your rigger, but I love this brush and it's got a lovely point, but also it carries lots of paint. So still mixing up the Payne's Grey and the Christmas tree green and just sort of painting some of these um, sort of foliage now wet on dry just to pull it out and to add the detail here and there and just adding a little bit more detail here wet on dry with my size 4 brush using that Payne's Grey with a little bit of the Christmas tree green and using some more of that colour using a larger mop brush now painting bigger marks here in the foreground on the right hand side and the left to really pull this tree out here on the right hand side as it's as it is in the foreground just to really pull it forward I just want to soften some areas so I'm spritzing here and there allowing the paint to drizzle down sort of creating sort of semi abstract effects as well I love working like this um, sort of trying to create some magic here with the watercolor waiting for that happy accident so I'm spritzing here just lifting off a little bit more of the paint there and just mopping up any puddles so I'm having a little spritz here of the yellow ochre using the mop brush in the center there I kind of want to have some warmth there and I'm using the spritzer bottle just to blend that into the background and tilt as well, just to warm up that area. Adding a little bit more of the yellow ochre, wet into wet there with the mop brush. And of course, tilting to allow the paint to run down to the bottom of the painting there and spritzing just to give it a little helping hand. And I'm going to allow my painting to dry once more. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to be painting some people. Now you don't have to add the people, but I just thought it'd be quite nice of them coming out of the mist here. So I'm using the size four brush, mostly the Payne's grey, but sort of adding other colours here. So I've added a pinch of red just to vary the colours and even a little bit of Prussian blue. So the trousers or the legs are Prussian blue. If you notice at the bottom of the legs, I've sort of just faded them away. So no hands, no feet, no neck, no features. And I'm painting the second person on the right here. I'm just using the yellow ochre to start with, with the head area and then sort of painting a coat. Hopefully a warm coat looks quite damp out and it will be snowing shortly as well. So adding a touch more of the Payne's Grey. And when you're painting the legs, it's literally just sort of very sort of thin rectangle, wider at the top, thinner at the bottom. And I will put a link in the description below of my people painting tutorial if you want a little bit more help with painting people. I was going to have these people walking away, but I've decided to paint their faces. So I'm just adding a little bit of white to the yellow ochre with my size four brush. And it really makes us look at them and it almost creates movement. I'm just adding some details to their clothing there, damp into damp. And I've decided to give the person on the right a Christmas hat. Now you don't need to do this. I'm just having fun here. So I'm giving the person on the left a blue hat, still using the size four brush adding a little bit more creamy red here and just swiping to the left to get a red scarf on this person on the left hand side it just adds color but you could just keep them quite neutral it's up to you that's the beauty it's your painting and i've added some cerulean to the panes gray and i'm just painting some cast shadow there on the ground damp into damp adding a little bit more of the Christmas tree green and the Payne's grey here and just painting damp into damp little bits of foliage here to the right hand side. Um, I felt I'd spritz away too much so just adding a few more almost with a dry brush effect it has dried quite quickly here and the dry brush gives lovely texture and the best way to get dry brush is hardly have any sort of moisture on your brush and have quite textured paper and also dried paper and it's quite a nice technique. So just adding a few more marks here and there, just to add a little bit more detail to the people by adding white on the right hand side so it looks like the light's catching them, but also some white on the Christmas hat as well and some detailing on the clothing just to really sort of brighten them up. They are now the stars of the show. So I've really got myself into this painting by telling myself it's just a practice, of course. And then before you know, 
you right into it and it, it it's so good at taking the pressure off working like this. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry. Once it's dry, I've decided to spatter the painting with some slightly watered down white gouache using the mop brush to finish off just here and there. And using white paint is my final tip. It really does take the pressure off because you know you can sort of hide mistakes or even spatter some white over something or an, another color mixed with white. So it kind of disguises any sort of mistakes. And you know, you don't feel that you've spent two hours painting a picture one little mistake where you can cover it up and disguise it so that's my final tip and i really hope you found these tips helpful in taking the pressure off when you are painting in watercolor if you like this video and you'd like to support the content that i create here on youtube why not think about joining my patreon membership you will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials downloadable outline sketches and you can cancel anytime details about the membership can be found in the description below thanks so much for watching happy painting bye for now